What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Now, we are about a year and one month into the Soviet... Inv Soviet... Uh, Freudian slip. We are now a year and a month into the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This, of course, had huge geopolitical ramifications, but here at this channel, we're mostly focused on the firearms aspect, which is why we've done three videos now talking about some of the weird guns that are popping up all over the conflict. Whether it's old guns, brand new guns, very improvised guns. By this point, I would have thought we would have seen everything. Well, apparently I was wrong because we have an entirely new video full of stuff that we haven't shown yet. So one of the things we've seen a lot in this war zone that is pretty fucking interesting, I think, is the juxtaposition of old world kind of Soviet weaponry mixed with new technology and not always good ones either. Take, for example, this modernized PKM that looks like the non-consensual offspring of a regular PKM and the corpse of the M240 Bravo that's sitting right under it. But at least this looks like it might be fairly effective at serving the purpose that they intended it to. Then I saw this video. That is a military AK-74 with a thermal optic duct taped to the top of it. My confidence that this is going to hold zero is, well, it's, it's, it's not high. I'm assuming this is some sort of thermal spotting scope that somebody, uh, probably delirious from lack of sleep, decided was a really good idea to duct tape to the top of their gun. I have made thermal scope, comrade. I am of make budget repair. This wouldn't necessarily strike me so weird had it not completely obscured the iron sights. But speaking of somewhat ghetto conversions, remember those auto shops we were talking about a while back? The ones where they were converting PKTs, basically a PK machine gun that was built to be fired electrically from a tank, and they were giving them stocks and triggers and basically turning them into PKMs, more or less. Well, not all of them look quite that pretty. Saw this one the other day. Got an attachment for an AK stock there. A tube steel pistol grip. Little trigger that looks like it could have been cut from the same tube. And a charging handle that, well, looks like it's a crushed up shell casing from a 12.7 or a 14 millimeter or something like that. Kind of wild, but hey, if, if you're in need of a PKM, and that's all you got, it, it'll do. Necessity being the mother of all invention, I suppose. Now for these next photos, we're going to be looking to the skies. But before we do that, it is in fact your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a must-have if you have a cell phone and you occasionally get bored, which is probably why you're watching this video, probably even on your cell phone. It's completely free to play and you can compete with millions of other players. In fact, Raid's been downloaded over 80 million times already, but even better, it's somebody's birthday. It is now officially Raid Shadow Legends' fourth birthday, meaning that some of you guys have been playing Raid for up to four years. And Raid spent the last four years helping creators like me survive in a, a place where AdSense is not really our friend. So to celebrate their fourth birthday, they asked me to choose four champions that I would like to invite to a birthday dinner party. Think I would pick Venus, Kalia, Cephalia, and Skyle of the Drakes. I think it's pretty obvious why I made my choices because this is a dinner party and they look like they can cook. Where, where did you think I was going with that? Anyhow, it's not just a dinner party because they've got a bunch of cool new offers for you guys. Free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event where you guys can get your hands on an anniversary themed legendary champion. Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get awesome bonuses. We're talking about an epic champion, Kellen the Shrike. After you've clicked on all the links, just put in the promo code four years raid. That'll get you four legendary skill tomes plus other useful stuff. So be sure to either use the QR code or click on the links down in the description and in the pinned comment, download Raid today. Thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Back to the content. Drone warfare is playing a huge role in the war in Ukraine right now. You've all seen the grenade drop videos and whatnot. And while that was a crazy thing to see, like kind of the incorporation of modern technology into guerrilla warfare, shit's even getting crazier now. Like this remote glider with an RPG-7 rocket on the front. Now, I'm not really sure what the deal is with this or if maybe it's even a military production item. But I can tell you something that isn't military production. You know those civilian FPV racing drones that you see everywhere on YouTube? Well, they're starting to work a second job in Ukraine. Yeah, they're strapping rockets to those two. This is actually a little scarier. Because, you know, the grenade drones, those at least have to get right on top of you and then drop, you know, drop the grenade and hopefully, like, kind of somewhat land in the right place. This thing's just gonna dive bomb straight at you like a fucking hunter killer from Call of Duty. I love some of the writing that they put on this. It uh, seems a little personal. Love from Odessa. Now, I can't really read Cyrillic that well, but I can only imagine some of the heinous shit that's written on the other ones. But now the use of hobby drones has become like a known thing on both sides. The question is, how do you defeat them? There's been all sorts of crazy attempts at, you know, anti-drone, directional EMP kind of craziness. But if there's anything we learned from the uses of drones in the first place, sometimes simple is better. 
Which means it may be time to bring Grandpappy's shotgun out of the closet. Speaking of breaking things out from Grandpappy's closet, uh, notice the MP40 there on the right. Grandpa probably picked that up off of a German in the 40s who uh, didn't quite make it through the winter. But yes, these old shotguns that were designed to take out birds are now being used to take out drones. It's like skeet shooting, except the prize is you don't get grenaded. Take for example this video of a Russian using a single shot 12 gauge to try to take out a Ukrainian drone. Remember when Amazon was talking about using drones to deliver packages like yeah, same day Amazon Prime kind of shit? And then Rednecks memed about shooting them down and getting loot drops so much that I think they just pretty much dropped that altogether. Man, this country. Wouldn't live anywhere else. Next up, we're getting to the really cool shit. But if you dig this kind of stuff, I did want to give a quick shout out to the main channel sponsor, SDI. It's the Sonoran Desert Institute, and it's a great place to get your start in gunsmithing or weapons technology. Leave the links in the description and the pinned comment as always. A cool thing we're seeing a lot more of now is actually fouls. The based right arm of the free world that makes certain parts of Twitter very angry and a great excuse to wear short shorts. But its reputation as the right arm of the free world is continuing to prove true. Fouls, or specifically parafouls, are actually showing up all over Ukraine, even by the crate load. Which makes a lot of sense considering how much NATO stuff they're being sent, whether it's, you know, weaponry or ammunition. Being that the foul is chambered in 308, which is the NATO 762, uh, it makes sense that they'd be using stuff like this now. Because of course you'd traditionally be thinking about Ukraine, you know, as that kind of former Soviet bloc. Uh, you'd be thinking a lot of AKs and stuff, which, I mean, you do clearly see a ton of AKs out there. Just like this gentleman here is using something that's kind of exotic for the US. Something you don't see very often, which is an RPK-74. RPK, of course, being the light machine gun variation of the AKM. Basically just a reinforced receiver, bulge trunnion, and a thicker barrel. The RPK-74 is the same thing, but in 5.45, the AK-74 caliber, hence RPK-74. So he's providing infantry support for the tank behind him with the... Ukraine, what's that? It's a smoothie. All right, now let's talk about my favorite part. That's right, Maxims. Now for the uninitiated, the Maxim is a belt-fed, water-cooled, uh, general-purpose machine gun that was designed in the 1880s and has basically served in every European war zone since, Ukraine being no exception. I also own and have featured a Maxim on the channel before, and I'm very, very fond of the platform. Just a really neat historical piece. But just because it's historical doesn't mean it still doesn't have a place in modern warfare, apparently, especially according to the Ukrainians. Just ask this absolute stud with his bicycle maxim. I also love how he swapped out the traditional paddles in favor of a stock. Here we can better see his scope and the camouflaging that's going on there on that, uh, that water reservoir, as well as the spray painted kind of leafy uh, foliage camo up front. That's kind of cool. But you know, that's not really far enough, I don't think. You know what this thing needs? Obviously a suppressor. You know what, man, I'm not even mad. Normally I'm like, you know, leave historic pieces like this alone, but well, for one, the guy clearly has a use for it. But this is so practical and semi-tastefully done that I, I, I'm not even mad. But you know what's better than one Maxim? Well, if you say two Maxims, then, then you're correct, but we've, we've already done that one before in a previous episode. But what we haven't done is three Maxims. Now, why the hell would you ever need three Maxims? Well, for when you want to shoot something three times as much, I think the answer is fairly obvious. I think this is also a lot for uh, anti-aircraft and things like that. Frankly, I, I think this is pretty much for whatever you need it to be. Let's say these Maxims are firing at 650 rounds a minute. You multiply that by three and you're cruising out almost 2,000 rounds per minute of 7.62 by 54R, which I will remind you is the same round that the Dragunov and the, the Mosin Nagant fire. Just 2,000 times per minute. You know what, those are rookie numbers. We gotta bump those numbers up. What say we give you four maxims? This is getting kind of ridiculous, but I'm still here for it. Even though we're starting to get into the territory of like those mech things from Matrix Revolution. We've now taken the maxim, put four of them together, and now we have something that is basically just a ghetto rigged minigun. This is what happens when the next support package that we send to Ukraine isn't money or weapons, it's, it's rednecks. We should just start sending them rednecks. So what do you think about the Maxims? Still cool on the battlefield or should they just kind of let grandpa retire? Let me know down in the comments and also let me know if you guys have seen anything else that's weird pop up in Ukraine. Something that we haven't covered in the prior episodes, which if you wanna watch them, of course, 
subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, go ahead and take a look around the channel and check out some of the other Guns of Ukraine videos we've done. Anyhow, that's all we've got for this episode. I appreciate you guys staying to the end. And as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks, guys. Para fouls, fouls and sp sp fouls or fouls or uh, fouls or specifically, fuck man.